The following is a Hoop Bowl presentation. Hello and welcome to the Box Score Breakdown Show brought to you by Hoop Ball. My name is Adrian Benjamins. I'm joined as usual with the great Neil Roach Lonnie. Neil, how are you, man? Man, what an introduction. Thank you very much for that. Um, I'm doing better tonight. I had great news about Karis Levert. Uh, shocked and happy at the same time. Um, and uh, late schedule tonight, so I just keep staring at the same stats, thinking they might change on <laughs> me, but they don't. Um, that's about it. How are you tonight? I am ecstatic because... Uh, of the Karis Levert news, man, I don't even care from a fantasy perspective, from a reality perspective. I am so happy that Karis Levert has avoided, um, fr and he's got no fractures. He will not need surgery. There's a sh chance that we're going to see him back this season I've heard some people speculate on the timetable, and they, they're thinking maybe just after the All-Star break. Neil, this is amazing news, very happy news. And um, Neil, I'm not a doctor, but I don't know how it's possible for somebody's ankle to bend the way that Levert's did and for there not to be a fracture. It's unbelievable, man. Yeah, I, I'm not a doctor either, and um, <laughs> <laughs> all I know is uh, he's a lot tougher than me. I would have been, like, curled up in a fetal position, like, crying my eyes out of when that happened to me, and God bless him. I'm glad, I'm glad he's getting good medical care, and it sounds like it's going to be, he's going to be able to come back this season at some point. I guess I'm assuming uh, there are, it's going to be many months in between, but happy to hear that it's not a, a permanent thing or it's not something that's career ending or even season ending that's amazing absolutely it's just great news man when i when i heard this earlier today it just completely made my day man because uh we talked yesterday about how devastating that injury was and um you know it's so this is just great man neil the other thing that i think we need to touch on is the drama that's going on right now in Golden State, man. I mean, this league is never short of uh, of drama. And here we go, man. Uh, a rift seems to be brewing between Kevin, Dar Kevin Durant and Draymond Green. Uh, Neil, did you see that footage of the game yesterday when Dur uh, Durant was calling for the ball? He's like clapping his hands, really pissed off that Draymond didn't get him the ball at the end of that game yesterday. Did you see that, man? Yeah, I watched the end of the game, and I saw that. And I didn't see uh, live Kevin calling for it. I just saw the play and Draymond uh, losing control of the ball, and then it goes to overtime, and they end up losing. Yeah, I, I mean, D Draymond is a, is a feisty fellow, so I guess it's not that, that un, unusual for him to get in a spat with a teammate. Uh, there's been a talk before how he's gotten a spat with Kerr and, and um, had to be held back from him. And this is in years past. So anyway, um, I, I, the drama was kind of fun, but, you know, they lost. I think if they would have won, it would have been no big deal. And I think um, I think once they get back to winning, this will all go away. So, Neil, sometimes I feel like you read my mind, man, <laughs> because I was thinking the exact same thing. Winning solves everything. Winning uh, you know, if you're a little unhappy about something, if you win, it puts that, it kind of suppresses that. And they're going to get Steph Curry back. They're going to start rolling pretty soon. Still heavy favorites to uh, win the whole thing this year. And Neil, if they win the title this year, we're going to forget that this even happened. But, um, you know, Earlier today, I was reading from some sites and some people saying, hey, this is just a normal work argument. You know, at work, you have arguments or whatnot. But, Neil, um, I mean, he Draymond's suspended for a game. No pay for one game. I mean, so this is a little bit more, um, you know, from what I'm hearing, he um, came after Durant personally. 
uh, called him a bad word or this and that. So, you know, the team felt like he, he went too far, which is why he's getting suspended in this game. So it's, it's going to be a little interesting, though, to watch to see how it happens. But I do agree with you, Neil. Winning will ease any, um, you know, like winning will solve it all, man. All yeah, right. yeah, I agree, and I think I think they'll uh, they'll find a way to patch it up. One thing Kerr is really good at is managing all these uh, personalities, so I think we'll be fine. Although it would be it would be fun to see if that something happened and uh, this team fell apart, <laughs> because I am not <laughs> a fan of them. But I don't think that's going to be the case. Anyway, um, what else did you want to talk about? I think there's one more thing, and I forgot about it. One more thing I want to talk about, Neil. Uh, it's a little vague. I read some reports today that the Mavs may be frustrated with DeAndre Jordan so far um, at the early part of this season. There's reports that um, because of his selfish play that uh, the Mavericks are bothered with, with DeAndre Jordan. And, Neil, this is really surprising to me because – you know, when you go after and you get DeAndre Jordan, you're getting a guy who rebounds, protects the rim, and gets alley-oop dunks and puts them in the hoop. Like, that's what he does. So, you know, he's not a facilitator. He doesn't get assists. So what exactly are they frustrated about? You know what I mean? So I actually want to do more research into this story find out, you know, where is this coming from? Who exactly is frustrated here? There's reports saying it's the teammates or so I, I don't know man I it's an interesting thing to keep an eye on what do you think about it Neil yeah it's hard to um I'd like to find out more too if you do find anything else because it seems like on the court he seems very unselfish I mean I know he does like to gobble every rebound but he is someone who's just there to sort of set screens and then they run a few plays for um puts back dunks um you know defends at the rim and finishes on the pick and roll i don't uh i don't see him as a selfish player when i watch him so it's interesting to hear that maybe it's something more than we understand i know there was some uh i know when he almost went to dallas initially is because he wanted more plays called for him and he was kind of frustrated in his role in la that was like four years ago but um not sure how this is going to impact the team um we'll see if there's an in the uh this comes about to lead to any sort of fantasy implications or reality implications. But um, like you said, never a dull moment in the NBA. Always, uh, always some chatter. Plenty of drama, man. This, uh, you know, Neil, I know you're not a big fan of the drama, but it definitely makes things interesting and uh, um, never a shortage of things to talk about with the NBA. Neil, should we dive in? We got a small slate of games uh, I'm going to be with you for two of these first games. You may have to do that Atlanta Hawks Golden State Warriors game without me. I think that's currently in the second quarter. Should we jump into the first game of the night? Yeah, lead us off. All right. Uh, first game of the night, Charlotte Hornets and the Cleveland Cavaliers. And Neil, this one was a shocker, man. The Cavs getting the victory 113 to 89. I'm going to jump in on the Cleveland side and I got to start with a guy that Neil and I have been talking about for a long time. Colin Sexton, 16 points tonight, a steal, four assists, two threes, seven to 18 from the field. Had a really nice game here, Neil, and played some pretty good defense on Kemba Walker. I know you're going to get into the uh, Hornets side of this game, but uh, a little short look into that. Kimball Walker did not have a great night. Uh, but anyways, um, the other thing I want to touch on, Neil, Larry Nance Jr. finally uh, starting, saw 35 minutes tonight, seven points, a block, a steal, and assists. The 12 rebounds is a great sign. Three of six from the field. He hit a three tonight, which is great. So, the usage isn't quite there yet. He only saw six shots, but Neil, I'm just ecstatic that he started and saw 35 minutes. This could be the start of the Larry Nance uh, player that we were hoping would show up this season. Uh, Rodney Hood tonight, 16 points, two assists, two rebounds, seven to 12 from the field, two to three from downtown. Hood has been... 
uh, pretty solid for the season, is a great scorer. This team really needs that wing scorer, and he's just filling that role nicely. Tristan Thompson, Neil, I am... um, I am streaming Tristan Thompson in a few leagues, and he is not letting me down. 21 rebounds tonight. he That's the one thing he does pretty well is he gets boards and uh, did not let me down. 11 points, no defensive stats, which is pretty disappointing. Five of six from the field. Um, pretty great game from him. Neil, they got some really good help off the bench. Jordan Clarkson, I feel like we talk about him every single time we're looking at the Cavs box score. 24 points, a block, two assists, five rebounds, five of five from the line, nine of 15 from the field. He's been pretty solid as well. And uh, Nawaba having a really good game here as well. 18 points, two assists, five rebounds, a steal, seven of nine from the field. Two and two from downtown. This guy just got on my watch list. Neil, what are your thoughts on the Cavs? Super quick, I just want to add, we're still no Kevin Love, no Kyle Korver, no George Hill, no Sam Decker, no Seti Osman. So they are missing a lot of guys here. Um, yeah, I really like uh, how... Gosh, why am I blanking on his name? Sorry. Uh, Larry Nance got in the starting lineup and played 35 minutes. So happy for that. You know, his plus minus wasn't great. It was more these veteran leaders like Tristan Thompson, J.R. Smith, um, Rodney Hood, who kind of led the day. Tristan Thompson just ate up Cody Zeller in the um, in the paint. Um, 21 rebounds, 11 points. Like you said, he is um, 140th right now in 8-cat. And um, I think it's 8-cat. Maybe I'm on 9-cat. Excuse me. But he is around that range. And... Like you said, he could uh, he could be worthy um, of a pickup. It's good to see you streaming him. Um, what uh, what I also liked was Sexton. Uh, you know, had a solid line. Doesn't uh, dig at two three pointers. Was worried about that that stat set from him. Only took two of them, but made them both. So if he is available somewhere, pick him up. Uh, same with Jordan Clarkson. He is now just on the cusp of being owned in twelve team leagues, and I think he's going to get. Um, he took fifteen shots tonight. He's been averaging just around that every night and shooting pretty well from the field, like 48%. So um, I like him as a pickup as well. David Nava, I think this might just be a function of a blowout game, but we'll see. I've always liked this, liked this fantasy game and reality game, so I'll have him on a watch list as well. I don't think you make a move yet there. And uh, that's it. Rodney Hood just doesn't do it for me. I know he's, um, he's at around 125 in the player rater, but he just doesn't do much on other stats besides scoring. Just two points and two assists and no steals, no blocks. So he's, he's a little empty calorie for me. Um, that's my take on uh, Cleveland. All right, man. Hey, one guy I forgot real quick. J.R. Smith might be useful in deep leagues. 13 points tonight, a steal, a block, five assists, three rebounds. Field goal percentage will always be an issue with him. Shot five of 13 tonight. But did add three threes. And, um, you know, in in these leagues that are 14 teams or deeper, you're desperate for some scoring help. He could be useful. All right, man. Should we take a look at the Charlotte Hornets side? Yeah, Charlotte scores just 89 points. And like you said, a blowout loss, surprisingly. Um, And Kemba Walker did struggle mightily. Just two of 16 shooting, um, including and just two of five in the free throw line. Um, scored only seven points, had six assists, four rebounds, a single three-pointer, two steals, and a block. I'm assuming this is his worst game of the season. Uh, Jeremy Lamb, on the other hand, had a solid game, 22 points, six rebounds, two assists, five of five from the line. He has a really good free throw rate, one three-pointer, three steals. Nicholas Batum played 29 minutes, 11 points, five rebounds, three assists, and a three-pointer. Marvin Williams, 30 minutes, 8 points, 2 rebounds, 2 assists. Someone who is still too far gone for me to look at him. Did have 3 steals, though, and 2 three-pointers and a block. Um, Cody Zeller, as I mentioned, got only played 18 minutes. Was not very effective. 9 points, 2 rebounds, 4 assists, um, and 2 steals. Off the bench, Malik Monk got 23 minutes. And um, Miles Bridges got 16 minutes. Neither one really putting up much fantasy value yet. They're still on my watch list. 
You know, I will say one thing, Adrian. As a Jeremy, as someone who owns Jeremy Lamb in a lot of leagues, I was happy to see this line. He finally had a breakout game, but yet plus minus against Cleveland, he was minus twenty four. So that makes me a little nervous about uh, maybe he won't be in the starting lineup forever. We'll see. I, I know he's he's the Brewski is a big fan of his. Other guys at hoop balls are or uh, hoop ball guys are really big on him, and I was as well. And I like to see this line. I'm just a little nervous about him going forward. Um. Other than that, though, there aren't that many guys on this team worth owning. Um, any thoughts from you on uh, Charlotte? Neil, I would not be too worried. I think I would look at this as more of a good thing. This team was so bad tonight, almost every single player was in the minus category. And I, I got an opportunity to watch uh, a little bit of this game, and Lamb was the only guy who had anything going in this game. So I think it's a great sign that he put up 22 points and uh, filled it up pretty much all over. So it shot really well, too. So if I'm a Lamb owner, I am actually pretty ecstatic uh, after tonight. Um, I'm holding Miles Bridges in a couple leagues, Neil. It's just not happening. I think I'm going to move on. I thought with... Um, Kid Gilchrist being out of this lineup uh, due to injury. I thought maybe Miles Bridges would see an uptick in minutes. I don't know maybe if it because it was a blowout or what, but um, I think I'm ready to move on from him, man. And that's all I got from this game. Yeah, thanks for the reassurance on Lamb. I I, I think he's going to be okay too. I just was shocked to see how bad his, <laughs> his plus minus was and uh, in his one really strong game of the year so far. So all right, you All right. Go over to the second game of the night. Let's do it. Uh, next game up, Houston Rockets and the Denver Nuggets. Uh, I was really interested. Hang on one second. I want to refresh, actually, my box score. Okay, final. Uh, the Rockets getting the win here, 109-99. to 99. This was a really interesting game, I felt, Neil, because the Nuggets are sliding right now. I believe... I believe they're on a four-game losing streak if we count this game. And they really started the season hot. So uh, I, I had my eye on this game. I'm going to um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to look in the Rockets' side. And first guy I want to talk about, Neil, P.J. Tucker, 41 minutes tonight. And I think we got to pick this guy up. The usage is low, but if he's going to get this kind of run – He's going to have lines like tonight, which was 12 points, a steal, a block, two assists, six rebounds. He added four threes. Neil, I really love that he can help. Most most nights he can provide defensive stats, and he's capable of hitting some threes, man. Like that's that's fantasy gold right there. Now, I, I do believe most nights or there will be nights where he puts up a real low-end night. But I think he's worth owning in uh, fourteen team and deeper leagues, maybe even some twelve team leagues if uh, you need some help. James Harden with twenty two points, three steals, a block, eleven assists, five rebounds. Um, only shot seven of sixteen tonight, two of ten from downtown, six of eight from the line. But it's a, still a, a nice line from Harden. Clint Capella, twenty four points. Nine rebounds, two assists, a block, 11 of 15 from the field is beautiful. Two of four from the line is okay. I'm just really happy to see this guy back in the lineup. He knocked his knee in the last game, was a little worried that we could see him maybe miss a game or two. So I'm just really happy that he's fine and looks pretty good, man. Um, Ennis with a good game here tonight, 16 points. Two blocks, a steal, four rebounds, one assist, two of three from downtown, six of eight from the field. This is a pretty useful game from him. Chris Paul doing his thing, 21 points, two steals, four assists, five rebounds, seven to 12 from the field. He did add three threes as well. It's pretty nice. Eric Gordon with 11 points off the bench. Even though he came off the bench, Played 33 minutes, which so as long as he's going to get that like starter type minutes, I think he's going to be pretty useful. Three of nine for the field. He he added two threes. 
Um, not too much else to talk about. Man, they had a real short rotation tonight, Neil. Five starters and only three guys off of the bench tonight. So uh, they were playing shorthanded, it, it seems. Um, what are your thoughts on the Houston Rockets? Well, I mean, just big picture. Good to see them back. Um, you know, the Western Conference is starting to get back to where we expected it. Uh, Denver at one point was one of the better teams in terms of records and Houston obviously had a horrific start to the season. And now Houston goes into Denver and wins by 10 and looking like the better team and slowly the standings are catching up. Yeah. I, I agree with you on PJ Tucker. I see him as 94th overall in eight cat. Um, I mean on a per game basis in eight category. And I think he does need to be owned if um, especially if you need three pointers and steals, that's where most of his value is. On the player radar, can kind of hangs around there. In the other categories, obviously, the points are what kind of holds him back a bit. Um, I um, it, it's just in my league, I need points. In the one league, I'm kind of making moves, and I where he's available, that is. And um, it's a 12 team league, and I just don't, uh, I can't take him on. Uh, so I, I'm holding off. But James Ennis, like you said, had a good night. Good to see Capella back in there, and Chris Paul and, and uh, Harden are just fine. I guess the other no, uh, news out of here is. Eric Gordon just hasn't delivered this year. You know, he was someone who I thought was going to be like that three and D guy that we're seeing from Tucker. And he's, he's out of the top 200 and tonight just 11 points on nine shots and then three of five from the line. So struggled there. He's kind of hurting you in every category. And, um, Carmelo is gone. It looks like right from Houston. So maybe that's, maybe that's some of the reason they're getting better. There's no one of that. Uh, sometimes you get rid of a guy who's just not really working out and he's taking up a lot of shots and usage and know he's no longer there and the, the whole energy of the team changes. So they've also obviously made some adjustments to how they, um, how they're attacking the rim. So they look just fine to me. Good to see them bounce back and uh, they're going to be right back in it. I think as we get towards the uh, second half of the season. All right, man. Should we, uh, what's going on with the Nuggets? All right, let's go with the Nuggets. Uh, Jokic played 33 minutes, had a quiet night um, for him. 14 points, 12 rebounds, 7 assists, 2 steals, no 3-pointers, 2 of 3 from the line, 6 of 14 from the field. Uh, You know, this team really balances out. Tonight, um, Gary Harris, 15-2-1 with 4 steals and 3 3-pointers. Jamal Murray, 15-1-5 with um, a steal, no 3-pointers. Paul Millsap, 13 points, one assist, four for four from the line, though. Very good for him. Two steals and a three-pointer. Hernan Gomez gets a start again, play 39 minutes. Man, they um, he was the only one with a plus-minus of a plus. That's so interesting. Um, he is someone I started in DFS tonight thinking maybe he'll do okay. Just put up a very modest line of six points, nine rebounds, two assists, and um, two three-pointers. Off the bench, Monte Morris had the bigger – has. It's one of the bigger lines of the night. 19 points, two rebounds, six assists, seven of 11 shooting, two two of two from the line, three three pointers. Uh, Miles Plumley, is this Miles? No, sorry, Mason Plumley. Uh, 19 points, two, uh, excuse me, four points, two rebounds, four assists, a uh, steal and a block. And then Trey Lyles, 13 minutes. Torrey Craig, seven minutes. Malik Beasley, six minutes. You know, uh, I still think Juancho Hernan Gomez should, um, is still worth a speculative ad. Um, if he's out there, uh, if you have someone you can drop, certainly watch him to see if this continues. He's now gotten 39 minutes and um, 30 minutes the last two games. And that's I know his stat line hasn't been great, but that the, the stat lines usually follow the minutes eventually. So I would uh, hold on to him if you picked him up and just to see how it rides out for a couple more games. Other than that, uh, not much takeaway from the Nuggets. They've got to be a little demoralized. This is like two home losses in a row now to Milwaukee and Houston. Hopefully they can get um, their mojo back soon. Thoughts from you? You know, it's it's really interesting. It, it feels like they're getting away from Torrey Craig. He was a DNP CD on Sunday. And, you know, when Will Barton first went down, uh, I think they were starting Torrey Craig. So, Seems like now he's, you know, out of the three guys of Hernan Gomez and Lyles, now he's like that back third guy now. So it's an interesting situation to keep an eye on. I love that Hernan Gomez got 39 minutes, but still very low usage in that 39 minutes. But I'm still keeping an eye on the situation and uh, not too much else here. You know, this is one of the teams, Neil, we know. We know who the studs are, and we kind of get we got a really good grasp of um, who 
the uh, who the providers are on this team and who are the like back end guys. So we pretty much know what we're getting from the Nuggets night tonight. All right, man. Uh, is that it? That is it. It's a very Jeez, short night for us. How about that? Just two games. All right. Well, I know tomorrow is going to be a big night. I'm sure there's going to be a huge slate. So I'm looking forward to tomorrow's show. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to uh, put a bow on this one. Neil will be back for the final game of the night, which I think were the Hawks and the Warriors. Really curious to see how the Warriors looked with uh, no Draymond tonight. So I'm looking forward to hearing about that, Neil. Um, you guys, please hit me up on Twitter, at Adrian Benjamins. Thank you guys so much for listening. I'll see you tomorrow, and Neil will be right back. All right, going on to the last game of the evening. Not a very pretty game. Uh, Golden State prevails over the visiting Atlanta Hawks, 110 to 103. Atlanta made it interesting in the end. Um, Golden State uh, kind of just toyed with them until the very end. On the Atlanta side, uh, Torian Prince, 39 minutes, 22 points, four rebounds, four assists, two of two from the line, four three pointers. Alex Len had a solid game starting at center. 14 points, six rebounds, an assist, six of eight shooting. Uh, unfortunately, two just two of five from the line. Trey Young, uh, 28 minutes, four points, five rebounds, nine assists. Uh, just shot two of 12 from the field, including 0 of 5 from three pointers. Did have three steals. The one interesting note in this game was that he was not on the court at the end of the game when Atlanta was trying to come back and uh, perhaps um, pull off some sort of last minute heroics. Uh, Jeremy Lin was the one in there. Um, and Jeremy Lin played 20 minutes, 10 points, three rebounds, four assists, four of nine shooting, two three pointers, and a steal. Uh, Jeremy Lin is not getting the minutes he needs to be fantasy viable, just averaging 16.8 minutes a game. And unfortunately, I think um, that's going to continue. So uh, he is not ownable, but um, on a permanent basis, he's doing pretty well. So maybe in deeper leagues, uh, 16 team leagues or. Or more right now he is currently 178 out there while trey young is at 74 in a cat on a per game basis all right let's move back though to some of these stat lines kemp Bazemore, 27 minutes 18 points two rebounds one assist seven to 16 shooting one of four from the three-point line and one steal um off the bench uh there's a gentleman named alex I'm not going to pronounce his last name. Um, Vince Carter had 17 minutes. He had 11 points and six rebounds and three assists in the first half. He had 11 points, I know. Did not really play much in the second half. Not sure why. More minutes were given to Deontay, Deontay Bembry, who played, or I shouldn't say more minutes, but more second half minutes. He played 16 total minutes, 13 points, two rebounds, one assist. You know, I've been watching Bembry for a little while now. Started watching him last year. Uh, I thought he had the stat, the stat set ability to be good and getting a lot of defensive stats in a short period of time and some rebounds and made some plays tonight, three for three from the line, two three-pointers, two steals, and a block. He just doesn't look very good out there, though. Um, this game hasn't really developed to where he can play consistently in an NBA rotation, even on a, an Atlanta team. And um, that's unfortunate because I think uh, last year I thought he might develop into in a second year into something more promising, hopefully – Will continue to get better, but right now he's on the outside looking in at 191 in eight cat. Uh, Torian Prince is at 62. Uh, Kemp Bazemore is at 47 in eight cat. I neither of these guys. I mean, Kemp Bazemore was if you picked him up on, late, on one of your latter rounds or one of your late rounds, that's great. I think he might um, lose a little value. I don't think he's going to stay in the top 50. I, I think he's maybe closer to 70 or 80. By the end of the season, there's also talks about him getting traded. If you can sell high on him, which is probably very hard, people tend to um, look at their players or evaluate players based on just not just how they're doing the year, but pre-draft rankings. And Bazemore was certainly not 47th in the pre-draft ranking. Uh, Torian Prince, though, at 62. Um, he had a solid night at 22, 4-4. Four four. I don't know if I mentioned that with four three-pointers. I think this is kind of where he stays at his value. John Collins will be back soon. Will take over more. Um, it might hurt Torian Prince's shooting a little bit um, in terms of his uh, points. I don't think it's going to hurt him though overall fantasy value. It might actually help his field goal percentage as he gets better looks. So I think it'd be a, pretty much a net wash um, and stays where he is. Trey Young, 
I think will go up a little bit once Collins comes back because I think his assists can go even higher and hopefully he will take um, get some more open looks and improve his free um, field goal percent as well. So I think Trey Young might end up in the 60s by year's end while Turian Prince will stay in the 60s and Baysmore will probably be the third-ranked player in this team um, somewhere below that and, and above 100. Anyway, so that's my thoughts on Atlanta. Uh, not much else to say. I guess watch Len, uh, Jeremy Lynn. I was looking at Alex Len's name too and um, maybe stream him until Collins comes back. On the Golden State side tonight, um, no Steph Curry, no Draymond Green with the uh, one-game team suspension for his uh, drama last night with Kevin Durant. Durant did lead this team with 29 points, six rebounds, three assists. Not very efficient, though, just 9 of 23 shooting. Did go 11 for 11 from the free throw line. Missed all his three-pointers. Did have two steals and a block. Um, Clay Thompson, solid game. 24 points, five rebounds, four assists. Uh, again, not very efficient. 8 of 19 shooting, but it, perfect from the line as well. 5 of 5 from the free throw line. Three three-pointers and two steals. Uh, Quinn Cook, someone um, who I've been streaming, and I'm sure many of you have as well, with Curry on the bench Tonight produced 18 points, six assists, four rebounds, two three pointers, a steal. Um, Jarebko gets a start and uh, produced a pretty good line 14 points, 12 rebounds, two assists, five of nine shooting, four three pointers. Actually, a very good line for fantasy and I'm sure for DFS as well. Um, Damian Jones uh, sort of gets the um, starter's role, but not the starter's minutes still. Just two points, five rebounds, two assists. I thought there was. After his first game of the season, he had a block in his steal as well. I thought there was maybe a 10 to 20% chance he would break out into a serviceable player. He is currently 212th on the um, player rate or so. Um, not, that did not pan out. Uh, Iguodala, same situation outside the top 200. Tonight he helped with 26 minutes, 8 points, 4 rebounds, 4 assists, and 2 for 2 from the 3-point land um, in a single turnover. So... Not too much to take away from this. Uh, Jarebko, um, I think if Draymond's ever out, I think this guy can fill, can find ways to um, be fantasy value. Something to keep in mind in case Draymond ever um, uh, has another spat with Kevin Durant or other team members or you know is out for an injury and he um, he starts to get the role, especially if, if Curry's still out. That would, if Curry's back in, that would change a bit, but I still think Jarebko can do okay if he gets 25 to 30 minutes a night. Um. Damian Jones cannot, and is not getting that many minutes. Clay Thompson and Quinn, I'm sorry, Quinn Cook, I'm going to say, um, will go back to the bench once Curry comes back. Iguodala, Kevon Looney, Antonio, I think it's Antonio McKinney. Oh, Alfonso McKinney, excuse me. Um, all sort of on the outside looking in. Uh, so the only takeaway I would think is put your Jurebko on your watch list in case Draymond's ever hurt. Um it's also going to note that Curry is still number one uh, in terms of per game. Um, we were really high on him this year in hoop ball, and he has delivered uh, injuries aside, which I think they're so hard to predict. I don't think we could have uh, foresaw a growing injury um, or abductor injury, whatever it was, coming to Curry more than we could for any other player. And Durant is number three in a cat um, per game and will surpass Curry overall. Um, soon enough if Curry stays out. All right, that is it for the show this evening. Thanks for listening. Please follow me and, excuse me, hit me up on Twitter at Ball with Neil, B-A-L-L-W-I-T-H-N-E-I-L. Any questions, comments, criticisms, concerns, I'll be happy to tweet back at you. Also, I wanted to just remind everyone, tomorrow night there is a hoop ball contest in DraftKings. Um, it is... A $3 contest, um, it's limited to 50 players, but it's a GPP, which means it's a guaranteed payout something. I'm still learning uh, DFS terms. Anyway, um, the top 10 players will, top 10 finishers, I should say, will get $15, and then whoever finishes first will get a hoop ball t-shirt, which I've heard is uh, quite soft to the touch and wonderful to own. So I don't even have one myself. So I am going to be playing myself to try to win that. Um, but, uh, you will probably beat me since my DFS game is not, I'm still learning and, um, have a ways to go, but uh, I will be in that league. I'm going to tweet out that link. Also, if you follow hoop ball fantasy, the link is on 
They've been tweeting it out there. Dan and Aaron, Dan Bassburst and Aaron Bruski have been tweeting out that link as well. So if you follow them, you will find it in your Twitter feed. Again, that's three dollars to join. Um, a cap of fifty participants, and then the top ten win fifteen dollars, and then the first place person will get the T-shirt in addition. Um, and uh, that's uh, that's about it. Um, back tomorrow with a big night, and uh, talk to you then. This has been a hoop ball presentation.